Hey everyone, my name is Miguel Benitez and I wanted to reply to a uh, article that a number of friends sent me yesterday um, just asking my opinion on it. The article was written by Wayne Grudem and it was entitled Why Voting for Trump is a Morally Good Choice. Before I reply to the article, I do think it's important for you to know that I have nothing but respect for Wayne Grudem. I have benefited tremendously from his writings, and he has influenced me in my thinking in um, theology and politics and ethics. That said, I do disagree with the position that he takes in this article. The reason why I think Grudem arrives to the conclusion that he does is because of an assumption that he lays out at the very beginning. Grudem says this about Trump. He says, I did not support Trump in the primary season. I even spoke against him at a pastor's conference in February. But now I plan to vote for him. I do not think it is right to call him an evil candidate. I think rather he is a good candidate with flaws. It is my contention that Donald Trump is not a good candidate who merely has some flaws that need to be worked out. And so, because I don't make this assumption, I don't arrive at the same conclusion that Grudem does in his article. Even Grudem says this about Trump. He says, he's egotistical, bombastic, and brash. He often lacks nuance in his statements. Sometimes he blurts out mistaken ideas, such as bombing the families of terrorists that he later must abandon. I think that this is being brushed off way too easily in this article. The man suggested that we hunt down the families of terrorists. Yes, he did retract the statement, but it appeared as if he retracted it because of the backlash he received even from his supporters. Someone who takes a position like this is not a pro-life candidate. I also think the position that Grudem offers in the article is very short-sighted. He boils it down to one question. Which vote is most likely to bring the best results for the nation? And I would like to suggest that it's not either a vote for Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton. Even if at the end of the day one of those two are the ones who are going to win the election. I believe that what will lead to, as Grudem puts, the best results for the nation would be for Christians, for conservatives, to vote their conscience and to vote for someone who truly believes in conservative and moral principles and will be guided by that. One of the major issues that I think is important is liberty. Religious liberty, which Grudem suggests Donald Trump will champion, is certainly one of those issues. But I don't think that Donald Trump is consistently on the side of liberty. Don't get me wrong, I'm not a libertarian and I'm not promoting that position though I would like to see Gary Johnson in the debates if possible. But I'm referring to statements that Donald Trump himself has made and not retracted. For example, he said in one speech, I guarantee you we're going to be saying Merry Christmas at every store. We're going to be saying Merry Christmas at every store? How is Donald Trump going to do that? How is he going to make that happen? Don't get me wrong. I don't actually believe Donald Trump intends to force all stores to say Merry Christmas. I'm just putting this out there as an example of Donald Trump telling his supporters whatever they want to hear. No conservative who truly believes in the principles that most Christians are wanting to rally around would ever want 
to force people to say Merry Christmas. Okay. Now, I think saying Merry Christmas is a good thing. I appreciate when stores say Merry Christmas to me, but I certainly don't think anyone should be forced to say that. And so this is just one promise. It's a small promise, but it's a promise that Donald Trump made. Then if he were elected, we'd be saying Merry Christmas at every store. And that just doesn't seem to be the principled kind of candidate that Grudem presents in his article. Also, when it comes to the issue of libel laws, Donald Trump has expressed, and rightly so, his frustration with the media during his campaign. The media is certainly biased. There's no doubt about it. I think even just the emails that were leaked at the Democratic National Convention show media bias. But this is what he said in one of his speeches. One of the things I'm going to do if I win is I'm going to open up our libel laws so that when they run a hit piece purposely negative and horrible and false articles, we can sue them and win lots of money. It seems to me that this kind of control of the media, this kind of threatening of the media, is the exact kind of thing that conservatives want to get away from. And yet, Donald Trump is telling us that if he's elected, he's going to open the libel laws, and he's going to make the media pay for writing negative and horrible things about him. This is not the kind of candidate that conservatives and Christians should be supporting. One of the very most important values of our country's history has been liberty. And I understand Grudem's concern that that liberty will be stripped away if we allow Hillary Clinton to become president. I want to be clear here. I agree with Grudem that voting for Hillary Clinton is not really an option for Christians. Not if we're going to be consistent with our values and our ethics. That said... I do not think that it is consistent with the Christian view to vote for Donald Trump either. One of the other issues that should at least be mentioned, I've already suggested that some of what Donald Trump has said is not consistently pro-life, but also his reasoning for being pro-life. You see, Donald Trump says that what helped him evolve on the issue of being pro-life is the fact that he knew someone who was adamant about their wife getting an abortion. The wife stood her ground and was determined to not have an abortion. And that child grew up to, in Donald Trump's words, be a superstar an outstanding individual. And while I think this is great, and while I think the issue of abortion certainly should involve our emotions, because it is an issue worthy of our emotions, the question is, what about the individual who we know won't be able to have a wonderful, flourishing life if they're not aborted? You see, we've advanced far enough medically to know at times when children are going to be disabled, when children are going to have severe disabilities, when children are going to have a very, very short lifespan. And so it is one of my concerns that Donald Trump does not have the, the same conviction that Christians have, which is that every life matters, even if we don't all come out to be superstars and outstanding individuals. 
You see, we need to be able to make arguments that are more persuasive and more rooted in objectivity than merely the one instance that you know personally because many women who are seeking to get abortions are not in the same position as that gentleman that Donald Trump knows that wasn't aborted. My suggestion is that Christians develop a long game. We've allowed the popular culture and the Republican Party to determine what direction we go for long enough. It is my hope that whether it be through a reformation of sorts within the Rep Republican Party or that the Republican Party would fall away and a third party would arise and take its spot. It is my hope that we can begin to get true conservative candidates up there again that we could vote for people who truly have the convictions of Christianity and the conservative movement. I'm not asking for a Christian America. What I'm asking is for valued, principled people who we can vote for and put in positions of power like the President of the United States of America. I do not believe that Donald Trump is that person. Now Wayne Grudem makes a very persuasive argument. It is the one argument that I think has some merit for voting for Donald Trump, and that is the issue of the Supreme Court justices. I realize that a Hillary Rodham Clinton um, election will mean that we will have more liberals appointed to the Supreme Court. That said, if we continue to play the game, if we continue to allow the left to become more and more leftist, and we allow the Republican Party to start inching closer and closer to the left as well, we're ultimately going to lose out on that anyway. The reality is that I think the long game is where it's at. Is that going to result in some really, really, really difficult times for our country? I think so, unfortunately. Do I desire that? Absolutely not. Will I do what I think is right? And will I do what I think will ultimately lead to the well-being of my country? Absolutely. And that is why I'm suggesting the long game. I'm suggesting that Christians and conservatives find a true conservative candidate whose platform they can, they can support with all of their conviction and that they send a message that while this may cost an election for the Republican Party, it may, it will send the message that conservatives and Christians are done playing the games of electing wicked people to office simply because they claim to be a pro-life candidate. It is also worth mentioning Wayne Grudem argues in his article that for Christians to vote for a third party is to make it easier for Hillary Clinton to take office. I think this is flawed reasoning because it assumes that Trump had my vote in the first place. The reality is Trump has never had my vote, so I'm not taking my vote away from him. To, to suggest that I'm taking my vote away from Trump, you would have to equally suggest I'm taking my vote away from Hillary, and so it's a wash anyway. Not only that, some polls have come out recently showing that when a third party candidate is added to the mix, it's actually Donald Trump who benefits and not 
Hillary Clinton. All of that can be talked about further, can be argued further, but at the end of the day, I don't think that Christians should vote for Donald Trump, because I think Christians should vote for good and virtuous leaders, regardless of the consequences. I hope this is helpful as you're wrestling through these difficult issues, and um, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Feel free to comment down below. I'll also link to Wayne Grudem's article in the show notes, as well as um, some of the videos that are referenced for Donald Trump. God bless.